my name's Kyle, and this is how to trade a red paperclip for a house. One day I, d I looked down at my desk and I saw a red paperclip that was actually this size. I'll trade this for a beer later on if you want to find me. Put, put that on Craigslist, that picture. I want to trade it for something bigger or better. What have you got? Two girls in Vancouver said, we've got a pen shaped like a fish. Met in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven gas, gas station. Made the trade. Suddenly I had a pen shaped like a fish. Put that on Craigslist in the barter section. Next thing you know, I was down at Annie's house and she offered up a doorknob with a very funny smiley face on it. Took the doorknob back home. Sure enough, it was fully functional. Posted the doorknob on the barter section of Craigslist. Hey, come down to Massachusetts. I've got a camping stove with your name on it. What do you think? I said, I think that's for me. Took the camping stove with fuel, put that on Craigslist. Next, th the next thing I knew, I was getting offers from a Marine sergeant who wanted to trade his 1,000 watt electric generator. I said, sounds good to me, let's meet up. Went on to a Marine base, traded that camping stove for that generator. I thought this generator was great. Posted that on Craigslist. Next thing you know, I wound up in New York City with a generator. It got confiscated by the police. Had to go track it down. Almost got a ticket. It was a bit of a bit of a big deal. But I traded it for an instant party. And the instant party was a big hit. A lot of people want to party. The barter section was full of things. This was in Montreal. People like to party here. A column called Networthy in the Montreal Mirror picked up this story. The story in that uh, Mike, Mike Citrome wrote got picked up by the Journal de Montréal. It got picked up by the local news. It went around the world. Because of that one story there, one red paperclip went all over the world on blogs, and I was able to trade the red paper, or sorry, the instant party for Michel Barrette's snowmobile. If you don't know who Michel Barrette is, Google him. He's kind of a big deal. He's, he's, he's all over the place. The snowmobile was awesome. I went on national TV. I said, I'll go anywhere in the world except for Yak, British Columbia, to make this trade. I thought it would be funny to say Yak on national TV. Sure enough, Jeff, who lived in Cranbrook, BC, <clears throat> greater Yak, <laughs> said, come to Yak. We have a snowmobile magazine. We want to trade with you. I said, yes, yeah, sweet. Snowmobile. I, I will make this trade. Trip for two to Yak. All expenses paid. Let's do it. How do I get there? Bruno said, hey, why have you been wearing this shirt the entire time you've been wearing this stuff? I said, it's an inside joke, my brother. My cousin's friend named Ricky was wearing the shirt. He gave it to me as a joke. Bruno said, we want to promote you. Here's a van. Drive to Yak in the van with the snowmobile. I said, sweet. We went to Yak. I traded that van for a recording contract. A huge van for a promise. It was sweet. Didn't have brake lines, didn't have fuel. No problems there. Drove over. A few people wanted the recording contract. I ended up trading the recording, recording contract with a woman named Jody Gannett, who owned that house. The left half was vacant. She says, I want to record my album. What do you say? One year free rent in, in uh, Phoenix? I said, yes, absolutely. Let's do this. Her next door neighbor named Leslie, actually happened to work for Alice Cooper in his restaurant. She says, I can get you an afternoon with Alice Cooper for that one year of rent. I'll move next door. What do you say? I said, yes, absolutely. We took Alice Cooper's head. I went on stage in Fargo, North Dakota, and I traded Alice Cooper, an afternoon with Alice Cooper, for a kiss snow globe. <laughs> the world, the blogosphere, everyone went crazy. They said, you're, you're nuts. No one's going to want this. The thing I didn't tell anyone, I kept it secret, was that a fellow named Corbin Burnson, the actor from Major League and L.A. Law actually has a collection of over 7,000 snow globes. He offered up a paid speaking credited role in a Hollywood film for that snow globe. I said yes. We got the hell out of there pretty quick. <laughs> Next thing you know, the phone rang. It was Burt Roach in Kipling, Saskatchewan. And he says, we're going to offer you a house at 503 Main Street in Kipling, Saskatchewan. That's how I traded a paperclip for a house. The best part was the housewarming party. Kipling, Saskatchewan, population of 1,000. Over the long, Labor Day weekend in 2006, over 3,000 people came to town. <laughs> they held auditions for the movie role in town. Kipling Idol, local resident named Nolan Hubbard, 19 years of age, just graduated high school, was working for minimum wage at the Bottle Depot, suddenly won a movie role. Two months after that picture was taken, he was in Hollywood filming a movie. This was much more gratifying than owning a house in Kipling. It was, this was uh, someone else getting to live their dream. Um, everyone I knew was there pretty much, all my family, all my friends. All of the people I traded with along the way were there. People were saying, wow, everyone's here, this is great, you have a house. Don't you wish you still had that red paper clip though? That red paper clip's gotta be worth a fortune now. It's famous, it's world famous. I look them in the eye and say the same thing I do every day until that, from that point to now. If I'd never traded that red paper clip away, I'd just be a guy sitting in his apartment with an idea. Trade away your paper clips. Thank you.